Jam. Presented by 1-800-COLLECT. They don't even know who I am, but I'm Jerry Bonato, and this is Inside Monster Jam, presented by 1-800-COLLECT. Guess where? Dallas, Texas, Texas Stadium, home of the Cowboys five-time champion. Hey, let's start out right from the top. Let's go to the Monsters, the man, the legend. Gotta go now. Monster Trucks. You never know where we're gonna meet, is it true, Dan? That's true. I mean, here in Dallas, the people are great, and we're looking forward to doing this deal. There's a big, huge line back there. You got some uh, Bigfoot fans? Mm -hmm. Great Bigfoot fans. We rolled over down here two years ago. We're going to come back in here and take this race. You've been out looking at the course at all? Actually, I haven't been down to the track yet. You've got to take care of the fans yet. That's what we're here for. Oh, I just like to tear it up. You know, I like to run a show. I'm just harder than anybody else. Whatever somebody else does, I want to do more of it and better. Okay. Let's talk about Dallas, Texas Stadium. Oh, it'll be a great time here, you know. It looks like we've got a real good bunch of fans out here, and the weather's really not that good, you know, but it don't matter. You know, we're going to run hard whether we've got good weather or not. Do you have a monster truck at home? No, but... Would you like to get one? Because i got connections. I know this guy, and I think we could probably, the three of us, we could work something out. Yeah, I want to drive a monster truck when I grow up. <laughs> All right, you know what you got to do to drive a monster truck successfully? Uh, See this no. thing right here? you got to practice doing this at home. Get Dad's station wagon, get it out in the mud, and just, you know what I mean? Okay. You can do that? Yeah. You're the best. I'll see you, what, five years maybe out on the circuit? Yeah. What's your name again? Ross. Ross? Okay, Ross, I'll see you. Five years, we'll make TV. Thanks, kid. <laughs> Little Tiger and Barefoot kicked things off on the lengthy, roundy round track. The big jump meant lots of air for the monsters, and the tacky dirt made for tricky cornering. Brian Barthel handled his Chevy cautiously in the U-turn, then threw caution to the wind on the final straightaway, trying to clear two successive jumps. He made a nice save, but blew his rear tire on the landing as Brian Womack and Barefoot advanced. Dan Runny caught Scott Stevens sleeping at the line as the big foot board went huge over the jump to easily knock out King Crunch. Next up, Gary Porter and Carolina Crusher poured it on heavy as the big Chevy muscled its way into the next round over Ron Nelson and Bustin Loose, who was the fast loser. That put Bustin' Loose up against Pablo Huffaker driving Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger, and that did it for Nelson as the Digger took control of the race to advance. Tom Mintz and Monster Patrol were able to keep things rolling as they would take on Brian Womack and Barefoot. Mintz able to clear the double jump that gave Little Tiger trouble. Then he punches it in the turn and would launch the Chevrolet, but unevenly off the jump. Then it was holding on for the ride of his life as the beast twisted and turned in a phenomenal display of power and destruction. Now, the fans at Texas Stadium were going crazy. They couldn't get enough. Unscathed, Mintz emerged from the wreckage to salute all his fans. Though Monster Patrol won the race, the damage was significant enough to put the vehicle out for the night. Brian Womack and Barefoot were called back to take his place going up against Bigfoot. Dan Runny took charge off the line, just beating out the big red Dodge to put Team Bigfoot in the final showdown. That left two Chevys from Carolina to battle it out for the remaining position. They were even off the first jump, both running strong. Digger buckles down in the turn, then opens up the big block on the straightaway. Look out, here comes Digger. Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher kept it interesting, but the Grave Digger was on a tear. On to the final jump, and Pablo went huge to launch the Digger into the finals in Dallas. Inside Monster Jam. Hanging out in Dallas as the monsters roll out onto the course. Come up to Seattle, they get a great rollover contest. Let's have a look. You having fun? I can't hear you. Rollover competition. The Kingdom was the place to be for rollover action, and eight cars gave it their all to prove it was the craziest in Seattle. The crowd wanted rolls, and the drivers weren't about to let them down. Wild man Josh Reeves took a heck of a tumble in his 77 Honda Civic. The action literally kept rolling as the cars go side over side, end over end, and some even missed the ramp. As a matter of fact, there were some who couldn't seem to find the gas pedal. Well, anyway, Bruce Beeler was able to shake things up in his hot pink 82 Honda. Ouch. Dennis Robinson would take one more go at it. This time, he hit the mark. It's hard to tell who was the craziest, but the rollover action was wild, and the fans certainly got what they came for in Seattle. A closer look. Tell me about Carolina Crusher. What's under the hood? What the... You know, I need to know the inside scoop. Well, it's a 512 cubic inch Chevrolet engine, 871 blower, alcohol injected. It's putting out about 1,200 horsepower. I run a turbo 400 automatic transmission with a manual uh, reverse valve body on it. 
Notice how serious he looks right into the lens and he tells you, the home viewing audience on IMJ, what you need to know, in case anybody who's taking notes or anything. Is there anything you'd like to add to this? Are you still having fun? Well, as you know, we just appreciate all the great fans, everybody watching us. You know, you guys coming out, filming us, and, uh, you know, we're, uh, we've been in it for until soon be 13 years, and, uh, you know, we're still having fun of this. for you but it's uh it's been pretty fun to watch so what are you what are you gonna do today how's the truck driving oh uh, the truck's running good um we've broken a lot of parts here this weekend but all in all we've had some real good shows we won friday night i had a little bit of mechanical trouble during the show um today going for the win so what do you think of this track we're standing on here is, is that is that a good uh tacky cons consistency or what yeah it's probably as good as you can get on uh for bringing the dirt inside from outside, especially with the weather we've been having. It's really a very good biting track. You won't spend many tires here. The fans had their cameras ready to go as Pablo Huffaker, driving Dennis Anderson's Gravedigger, kicked things off against Steel Wilson and Virginia Giant. Huffaker ran quick off the jumps and tightened the turns to oust the slumbering Giant in round one action. Brian Womack and Barefoot went big off the crushed cars, but a slight bobble in the corner gave Brian Welch and Monster Control the room he needed to take the win and advance to round two, where he would take on Dan Runny and Bigfoot, who had defeated Reptoid earlier. Welch got a good jump at the line. Bigfoot, though, too quick on the tight track, sending Monster Control packing for home. Grave Digger came on strong against Nightmare 2, who had advanced past Extreme Overkill earlier. Huffaker was quick in every part of the track. Gary Bauer had a strong run, but Digger was all over him to advance to the finals against Bigfoot. You have smoked the competition so far. You got one more guy to race. That's Grave Digger. What are you going to do? Well, basically, we'll go in there and do the same thing we've been doing. I mean, it's just working the way through the bracket and going to the finals. I mean, we're going into the finals now, but it's, it's going to be rough. Pablo's a good turner on turning courses like this. We'll just have to go in there and smoke him like we smoked the rest of them. Bigfoot blasted off the line with rocket speed. Lenny handled the big board well in the corner, then punched it over the crush cars with impressive force. Grave Digger wasn't far behind going into the final turn, but it's all Bigfoot in Chicago as Dan Runty powers the victory. The Bigfoot fans went wild in the stands, celebrating the success of their hero. They wanted to see more air, and Bigfoot let them have it. All right, Dan, you were freewheeling it in the freestyle. You, you went a little too far, too fast, right into that hay bale over there. What happened? Nice bumper, huh? Yeah, look at this. We have a little damage here. Looks like my car. We come out for the fans. We come out and try to do a good show every time we're out here. So stuff like this happens. I mean, we won three shows. I won't get chewed out too bad from the boss. The Jammer Question of the Week, presented by 1-800-COLLECT. Hi, my name is Trish, and the Jammer Question is, what is off-road racing? Now let's check the IMJ calendar. It's Fright Night 7, Monster Jam time at Louisville, Kentucky's Freedom Hall, October 30th through November 1st. Arena Cross is in Des Moines, Iowa. Veterans Memorial Auditorium, November 6, 7, and 8. It's Ultra Cross in the Dane County Coliseum, Madison, Wisconsin, November 6, 7, and 8. November 13th and 14th, Monster Jam comes to Memorial Coliseum in Portland, Oregon. And it's Power Jam, November 14th, in the Houston Astrodome. Inside Monster Jam, Easter of the Week, presented by 1-800-COLLECT. Hi, I'm Ken Hudgens, Vice President of Marketing for Face Motorsports, and I have the answer to this week's Jammer question. Off-road racing takes all the speed and power and thrills of pro quads, thunder bikes, and super modified buggies and puts it in a stadium format for the fans to enjoy. It's awesome. What's happening? I'm hanging out with the number one band in Mexico, Plastilina Mosh. We're going to watch some great racing footage on IMJ. Well, let's check it out right here, right now, with this song, Monster Trucks. Afraid, I want to be your friend. I want you to ride in my back and say my real life. The monster trucks. The 
the best of the best showed up in Houston for a monster jump-off contest in the Astrodome. Get your trucks in gear, because we're going jumping Texas style. Carolina Crusher took control with an 89.73 foot leap, but there was one more contestant to go. Eric Meager and Bigfoot drops the hammer on the big jump, sailing to a jaw-dropping 94.18 foot photo opportunity in the Lone Star State. The U.S. Off-Road Championship Series. And for chilling here in my buggy in Pontiac, Michigan, the Motor City, we got some more off-road racing coming at you. Check it out. How do you get out of this thing? <laughs> the Pro Quad kicked off the U.S. Off-Road Championship Series Finals in Pontiac with number 18, Mark Earhart, battling for and getting the whole shot in the first lap, then going way high over the tabletop to lengthen his lead. Some vehicles had a tougher time than others on the track. While number one, Shane Hitt, needed a win to topple Earhart in the points, he rode hard, as did others in pursuit of the leader. But you could take this one to the bank, as number 18, Mark Earhart, took it all in Pontiac Pro Quad, finishing ahead of points rivals Barr and Shell. No one even contested you. Are you that dominant out there? I'd like to think so. Now I just got a good, I just got a good start and just kind of rode my own race. Like I say, my performance chassis just works awesome. Once again, congratulations, man! You just took history by winning the points title this year. <laughs> Mark Earhart just edged out rival Shane hitting the points, 810 to 808. What a season for the two! It's number 21, Kevin Beatty, tight in the corner to get the whole shot in the Pontiac Stadium light. Beatty has good speed on the straight to lengthen his lead, while number nine, Dot Van Hooser, found himself pulling up the rear. Number six, Randy Lesnowski got himself in a predicament. He went up right to finish fourth. Number 50, Richard Kosar, flew high off the jumps in pursuit of the leader, as did number one, Paul Sutton, who passed number 92 in the turn. But Beatty only widened the gap with explosive speed in the corners. There's the finish line, and the win for Beatty. Kosar second, Doyle was third. Look like I get a right combination going. The car worked real good. Hey, all you fans, you're great. You're why we're here. Once again, congratulations, Kevin Beatty, the feature winner of tonight's Stadium Light Class. Joe Price edges out Richard Kosar, 429 to 427 in the points race. The stadium sports truck took off. It was number 70, Randy Eller, shooting out of the pack, losing a quarter panel, but gaining the whole shot in the first turn. Eller widened his lead with bursts of speed in the turn, then got big air over the jumps as the rest of the pack played catch-up. Number 771, Kenny Dean out of New Jersey, experienced serious front-end trouble. And nobody touched Randy Eller that night as he took the checkers in the stadium sport trucks in Pontiac over Hawkers and Brandt. Was the season worth it, man? How did I like running the stadium races? I got to tell you, Scott, it was worth it. I tell you, well, we put our hard, we put our heart in this thing. My family, my dad, I dedicate this to my dad. He's standing up here in the stands. He stood behind me all the way. We're just tickled to death that we can be here. Larry Byer wins the point series with 7.30. Pete Soren was very close behind with 7.28. I'm Ann Ford, and that's it for part one action. We'll be back right here in Pontiac, Michigan, when we crown some more champions in off-road racing. Here on the Deuce, baby. Okay, I voted them cute couple of the afternoon in Dallas. There's no prize whatsoever. I'm really, really sorry about that. Rocks the 54,000 fans at the Superdome as Red Devil blasted past a wheelie popping fat cat in round one action. Money Pit buried the throttle mid race to just eat past Never Satisfied with a 1.59 run. Stressed Out got some relief, rocketing past Dan Bukovic and Bone Digger on the time course. Blue Bayou put on a show for the fans as the hometown hero would topple end over end after losing control. Driver Donnie Mars was uninjured in the melee and actually timed better than opponent Yo Mutter. Mark Green and the Mudbuster able to advance with a very close win over Steve Salvador and Quicksand. Then Little Beaver whooped up on Richter scale. Now this run will be good enough to put Beaver into the finals where he faced Money Pit, who would then come on to put him away with a 1.60 run. That put Money Pit in first place, but not for long. It would be Dan Brown and Mind Games in the right lane jetting the victory with a 1.598 run to win the New Orleans Sand Drags. All right, these guys are freestyling in Dallas. Now we're going to go up to Sacramento for Monster Truck action, which is why you are tuned in to Inside Monster Jam right here, right now. You know what I'm saying? Monster Trucks. 
the big guys were in position at the Arco Arena, and you better believe the Sacramento fans were charged. Christopher Roy in High Anxiety took on Mike Welch and the California Kid in the first round, with High Anxiety all but annihilating his opponent. Next up, Ron Nelson and Busted Loose took out Shredder with a burst of speed at the line to advance to the next round. The official gave the signal, and Dave Arkey and Team Bigfoot leapt off the start to rocket pass Scott Berkey and Wicked Sick, easily putting the Big Four into round two action. The California Kid was back in the fast loser position, this time taking on Busted Loose, who experienced engine trouble at the start. The California Kid took the win to advance to the final. Bigfoot got a serious jump on Shredder at the line that would set up a Bigfoot California Kid showdown. It did not take long as Bigfoot came off the line, blasting past the kid for the win in Sacramento. The fans were screaming for more as Dave Harkey and Bigfoot came back out for a crowd pleasing freestyle to end the show. Arena Cross moment. Albany Arena Cross action. It's number eight. Grayson Goodman getting the whole shot in the 250 class, but he would let number four, Chad Pedersen, slip by to grab the lead. Pedersen was nearly flawless as he negotiated the turns, the straights, and the jumps beautifully and continued to pad the advantage. Cliff Palmer had problems throughout the night as he was only able to come back with 12th place finish after a bad start. Buddy Antonis did get it together late. The number one bike comes back for a second place finish, but it was Pedersen taking the checkers for the win in Albany. Well, seeing as it's uh, a little bit of a feature on a flag, when I think it's only appropriate that I have a flag. Come on. The flagman feature. This guy takes himself a little bit too seriously. Kind of like you. <laughs> flagman. We're talking to the man, the myth, the legend, Roger Flag, a.k.a. the flagman. Roger, tell me, how long have you been flagging and when did it all start? Well, about 12 years, but I would practice every day waiting for the bus. And people would drive by and I'd wave the flags and one day it was really snowy outside and was waving my flags and some man stopped and thought I was flagging to let him know there was danger ahead. Would you call yourself a flag genius? Yes. In the excitement of the race, all eyes are on the flagman and the ultimate destiny of the race lies in your hands. What is going through Roger Slack's mind? I am the flagmaster general and all these people came here to see me because I just want to be the best flagman that I can be. Stadium Rock Trucks. Texas Stadium was the site for some of the roughest, toughest, baddest, meanest, and nastiest trucks ever assembled in the Lone Star State to duel on Dallas soil. The rough trucks battled it out with each other and with the terrain until finally a four-truck showdown was determined. Jim Holly and Joe Baker had quick draw, but they worked fast enough to make it to the final duel in Big D. The 78 Jeep Cherokee driven by Justin Springer was quick with a time of 21.03 until Ron Willis rode off into the Texas sunset with a winning time of 19.5 seconds. I've had a look in the IMJ dictionary for the legitimate definition of freestyle. Guys in trucks showing off with big, big tires. Have a look. You'll love it. It's great. Freestyle. Freestyle. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'll tell you what. I'll get out there. I, I kind of get a pattern, but after the first few hits, I just go anywhere. You know, it's really my favorite part of the game. And racing's racing. That's all right, but I just I love to freestyle. I bow down, so I'm in. Who's your favorite monster truck in the whole world? Cat, no. Just make one up. Could it be Gravedigger? Bigfoot? Little Tiger. Little Tiger. Did you see him almost crash out there? Man, he went brrrr, and the tire blew off. Is that cool? All right, high five. Right on. Inside Monster Jam. Gravedigger and the Bigfoot. The big monster on final show. Really cool, so go for him, okay? 
The Great Digger certainly had his cheering section, as did Dan Runty and Bigfoot. It's showdown time in Dallas. Both monsters were quick off the start, with Bigfoot getting the early lead on the first jump. Going into the U-turn, Grave Digger got caught up in the tacky dirt, but Pablo was able to make the save as Dan Ruddy opened up the blue Ford, clearing the double jump. As Digger tried to make up some time and nosedived over the whoops. Another good save by Huffaker, but it's too late as Dan Ruddy and Team Bigfoot took a roaring leap over the final jump, winning the 1-900 Pro Race Final Showdown in Dallas. A celebratory freestyle seemed like the right thing to do as two of the baddest monsters lit it up in Texas Stadium. Check out the marathon wheelie by Bigfoot. Deja vu for Grave Digger as he nearly topples in the double whoop. What a save. The fans were in a frenzy as the big trucks let loose. Take that. Then came Digger barreling over the jump. He blew a tie rod, losing control, but miraculously saved the black and green wrecking machine from a rollover. The climactic ending of freestyle was ending with stuff sharding out the back end of the Digger. What happened? Uh, it looks to me like um, I tore the end off a tie rod to start with. And then it starts slamming the tires side to side and rip both steering cylinders apart. No biggie, we'll fix it. You know, I think it's funny because it, w it was a good driver's course and Pablo got a little swirly. You stay nice and smooth, have the good forward power. Yeah, I gotta stay with it. I mean, it was definitely a driving track, but get a little shaky, you know? <laughs> Tell me about that big wheelie during freestyle. The view, you're looking up outside to Texas Stadium, all of a sudden you come down, there's the bulldozer. Now, actually, we were aiming at the tunnel. That's why we put that clear stuff in the floor so we can drive looking down through there. Seriously? Seriously. Gnarly. I might sound like I'm sucking up to you, but I want to thank you for helping with a great show. It's called Inside Monster Jam, presented by 1-800-COLLECT. I'm the talking guy, you're the driving guys. It was cool, Dallas Rock. How's yes, it sound? Does. Great! Great! Fine! Break to our trailers. Ready? Here, go! Truck Fest action is back, as IMJ brings you all the hottest racing from the Peterson Ford U.S. Truck Fest at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Digger and Crusher are right at home on the Carolina turf, but they have plenty of competition from the biggest names in monster trucks. Trailmaster Rough Trucks, Side-by-Side -side Sam, Pepsi Extreme Off-Road, Arena Cross, and lots more will round out the most intense half hour on television. Coming to you next Monday, November 9th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. That's Monday, November 9th at 6.30 Eastern. It's all yours for the taking. Catch it on Inside Monster Jam, presented by 1-800-COLLECT.